Hi everybody, it's John back again with another model inbox review. Um, today we're looking at another aircraft which probably needs no introduction, but the model itself is um, it's, it's another one of my close to my heart model kits because we're looking at uh, Matchbox's PK-11 Hawker Hurricane. It was originally released as a Hawker Hurricane Mark IIc and it is actually a Hawker Hurricane Mark IIc. Um, <clears throat> this is an interesting image because it actually shows one of the options available in the kit. Um, it's not JXE, but it's actually, I'm just trying to remember which one it is, it's LKA, which is a Night Ops version, 1941 um, Hurricane from RAF Fighter Command during World War II. Um, and I just thought it would be nice a nice poignant image there to show that's that's one of the options on the matchbox kit but before we go into the boxing history as i normally do i just want to show you a few options that are available on the hurricane that might be quite interesting the first <clears throat> is a company called tom's model works and this is a, a set of hurricanes that are made out of uh, printed photo etch plastic um, I don't really understand how the process works, but apparently it's something to do with um, layering the, uh, the photo etch plastic in print form to produce uh, these are actually 1700 scale hurricanes. And they don't look fantastic as they are like this in clear format, but when you paint these babies up, they can be extremely accurate and the, the reproduction of the, the 1700 scale model is actually it's second to none. It's it's really really accurate. One seven hundred scale. I don't think you can beat this form of uh, format. <clears throat> they're not usually cheap, or they're not hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You know, they're they're not usually a cheap option. I mean, these five hurricanes. I can't remember how much they were, but some of the other options that you can get for different aircraft, you get like two aircraft in a pack, and they're usually around about twelve or fourteen pound. Um, I have looked at the uh, pricings on some of these options and some of them are quite interesting but that's the tom model tom's model works one 700 scale hurricane um the next one is a company called uh aoshima who produce a british carrier borne aircraft set this is the aircraft set number two in their series and it comprises a corsair a barracuda a spit uh, sorry a sea fire a fairy fulmer and a hawker sea hurricane um, and the Sea Hurricane is actually, it's uh, it's a, a navalized variant of the Mark, I think it's a Mark I Hurricane rather than the 2C. But it is available again in 1700 scale as part of their Waterline series. And these kits are really aimed at diorama builders who build dioramas of ships and want aircraft safer, maybe an attack or lined up on aircraft carriers and whatnot. And these kits are supposed to be quite good and they're quite praised by the pro builders as well. So that's one 700 scales Aoshima, British carrier borne aircraft set number two. Also, a company called Flyhawk Model, they produce a World War II Royal Naval Aircraft set number one. Um, now, I'm pretty sure that the set only comprises six aircraft. Uh, but don't get me wrong, it could easily be 12 aircraft. Um, I can't see on the box exactly how many kits are in the box, but it's basically a number of swordfish, a number of fairy fulmers, Mark 1s, and a number of Sea Hurricane Mark 1Bs, I think they are. <clears throat> and that again is in 1700 scale for the diorama builders. Um, there's also a set of photo etch there. I don't know what that's for, but you can see on the images, you can see that the models themselves are actually quite nice. Um, and they do, you know, there's quite a lot of construction to do on them. That's quite interesting. So that's um, the Flyhawk World War II Royal Naval Aircraft set number one in 1700 scale. And lastly, in 1700 scale, and this is a really odd one, but I thought it would be quite interesting to show you guys. Um, Nico models do a 1700 scale waterline series of ships they're all resin kits um, cast resin usually but the thing that's interesting about this one is it's a cam ship of the empire b series of cam ships and it actually has a hurricane catapult fighter on the uh, on the launch uh, catapult there over the bowels of the cam ship and i just thought it was quite an interesting little thing to put in 
to show you. So that's the Nikko camship with Hurricane Catapult fighter. And then we go to a different scale. This is 1 150th scale, and a company called Eco produced Hurricane Mark IV RP. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's quite a basic kit. Not terribly accurate, I wouldn't have thought, um, but it is interesting that you can get a kit of a Hurricane in 1 150th scale. So again, I'm not sure who they're aiming at, though it's the diorama builders, because I don't know many ships that are available in 1 150th. 50th scale but it's not that far off 144th um so yeah that's that's an, another option that's available for that sort of area that's the eco hurricane mark 4 rp and then lastly just before we introduce the boxing history i wanted to show you this because this is really quite interesting now, i don't know who made these models for the serial company kellogg's but these kits were um, an introductory 1137 freebie in Kellogg serial boxing in a promotional uh, packaging, right? And these models are still available on the open market through the internet, through some internet sales sites like eBay and Amazon. You can sometimes still get these. And the thing that I found interesting about them is they're not terribly accurate. So you can see the airframe there, the tail fin especially, looks a bit Spitfire-ish, doesn't it? But it is a Hurricane Mark IV, um, even though it seems to have Hurricane Mark I wings, which is <laughs> interesting. Um, yeah, so I just found this quite interesting to see. And it is interesting that you can still get this. That's the one 137th scale Kellogg's Hurricane Mark IV. Now then, the boxing history. PK-11's Hawker Hurricane Mark IIc was released by Matchbox in 1972 as part of their initial 19 kits in their purple range when they first went into the modelling aircraft market. The interesting thing about the Matchbox Hurricane is that it's actually quite praised by the pro builders and reviewers, not for its detail, but for its accuracy. Um, the, Hurric the Matchbox Hurricane was actually one of the most accurate Hurricanes on the market when it was introduced in 1972, and it came in two unusual options. Um, most of the Hurricanes on the market were Mark IVs, um, or really there was only two. There was, there was a Mark II C Hurricane from Frog, which I think was introduced in the early 50s. And in 1956, I believe the Mark IV RP Airfix Series 1 Hurricane um, appeared on the market. And also in the early 60s, there was a Revell Hurricane Mark I. Um, which was also released, and all three of these kits were pretty terrible. I'll be honest with you, they were pretty terrible. And when the Matchbox Hurricane Mark II C came on the market, it absolutely stole the show. And even now, the pro reviewers and builders, IPMS guys, who put reviews up on the internet, they say that this kit, yes, it's basic, yes, it's got pretty diabolical deep tram lines going all over the airframe, but the overall outline... Of the airframe is is pretty accurate um, even the shape of the spinner and the front nose section and the canopy which is often got wrong the hurricane from matchbox is pretty good it's it's not the best certainly isn't the best especially now with the new tall Revell and airfix kits that have come on the market but it wasn't bad and in 1972 when it was released it was it was really good the type 1 boxes of course these were flip top lids they had no open enders and you can tell a Type 1 box because you had like some stats and some history on the aircraft and giving us a pictorial image um, on the front. And this is just some text here to show to show you what's going on in the image. Um, there was no PK number visible on the top of the box lid. It usually found its way on the side here. And there were also some other images on the side here, usually one of the of the aircraft made up without paint and a guide to how to construct the stand. Um, but these were the Type 1 boxes. They're, they're not easy to get hold of Type 1 boxing from Matchbox kits now. They're starting to get quite rare, and the Hurricane is actually one of the rarer ones to get hold of in Type 1. But you can still, if you hold out for them, get them quite reasonably priced too. So that's the Type 1 1972 release from the Matchbox or Hurricane 2C. In 1973, they re-released the kit um, on a Type 2 box, and you can see this is actually a flip-top lid, and this is an incredibly rare 
flip top rid lid type 2 box because usually the type 2s were open ended. Um, but this one is clearly a type 2 box so maybe this was an old style box printed with a type 2 um, livery over the box lid. Type 2s are very easily um, ID'd by having two colour kit in black embossed print. It's almost like a rubber stamp put on the top next to the Matchbox logo. Virtually everything else about this particular box is identical to the top. Sorry, the Type 1. Um, <clears throat> you can see here, uh, I've got 170 second scale Matchbox. PK11 is written clearly on the end of the box above Hurricane Hawker Hurricane Mark II C there. And on this side it shows you there are four adverts there for other aircraft in the range. Interestingly enough, this is PK12, sorry, PK12, PK13, 14 and 15, which these will be the next in line, which I'll be reviewing next in the Purple Range kits. Which is quite interesting. I thought that was quite interesting. The other thing that I quite find funny is the price tag on this box. It says 26p. And in 1972 to about 1974, these models did usually go for about 25 to 27 pence, um, in line with the Airfix kits that were released in Series 1 at the time. Um, so that's the Type 2. The Type 3 was released in 1974. These are open-ended boxes. You can see the open-ended lid section there. Um, you've got um, a different colour embossed two-colour kit stamp here, which is in the same colour as the range of the kit. In this case, it was in purple and black, um, but it's the same artwork as before. Um, nothing's really changed. Um, there are different adverts on the side. There's a Strike Master there I can just make out. Can't quite make out the others apart from the Mustang. Um, I'm not quite sure. Is that an F5 or is that the Net? I'm not sure. Um, but the adverts are on the side just to like advertise the other models in the range, um, just like before. And 1974 went through to 1975 and here we have the most common matchbox boxing type the type 4 and the type 4 had a totally different style um, purple range two color kit stamp where the actual ring in the background denoted the color range of the model in this case purple and then you had two color kit in white with a black outline to give a three color badge logo for two color kit um, there was also the word, and I've been corrected many times by my subbers, usually from Europe, that this word is not marquee, it's actually maquette. And it's a French word meaning model. Um, and I just thought I'd put that in as well. Um, there are some differences here. In 172nd scale, it's been printed on the top here, and it's in a different colour. In the, in the original boxes, I'm pretty sure they were purple. And the Hurricane Mark 2C has been just lazily put on instead of Hawker Hurricane Mark 2C. But the Matchbox logo is pretty much exactly the same. 1975 goes through to 1979 and the American agent uh, for a lot of European plastic model companies, AMT, got hold of a lot of Matchbox kits in the late 70s and introduced them into the American market and the Hurricane was no exception. Um, Moulding in two colours, as you can see, age 10 and up, that was the age group they were aiming at, between 10 and 15 years old. Um, the interesting thing about this particular kit is that it clearly shows, um, and this is a, a feature of all Nightop Hurricanes, you can see the blast shield um, to hide the exhaust gases that came out, which were incredibly bright at night time and stopped the pilot from blinding his vision and being able to fly the aircraft far more accurately. During the day, uh, day, day op aircraft or day fighters, if you like, they didn't have this blast shield. It was only a feature of night fighters or what were called um, rhubarb plane fighters where they went into Europe and attacked at night time, disrupted uh, Luftwaffe communications and attacked air bases in much the same way the Germans did during the day um, and this is one of the options obviously available in the matchbox kits I've shown before so that's the AMT release from 1979 um, then we go into 1982 and this is actually a version of the model that I've got um, <clears throat> this is a type 5 box and you can tell a type 5 box because it was the first introduction of new livery artwork and box design heavily influenced by Ravel. 
because Reveal actually was sourced for the marketing of Matchbox models. Um, a lot of the plastic model companies in the early 80s were struggling severely with the oil crisis. And uh, Matchbox was no exception. And they actually sourced out and like ideas for Revell to remarket and resell their kits. And uh, this is how they did it. They did away with the purple range. Um, they often introduced a new um, a new serial number for the box, but that didn't really come in until later in like the late 80s and 90s. This kit is still PK11. Um, and the 172 scale and two color kit or colours has been introduced in this format on the box and it's still an open ender as you'll see in a minute when we have a look at this kit's parts inside uh, but there's no feature of the fact that it's a Mark IIc it is a Mark IIc you can see the four Hispano cannons there on the wings but it's just marked as a Hawker Hurricane and they also changed the Matchbox logo here and trademarked this design and it was introduced by um, the boffins at Revell in 1982 so that's the Type 5 box we then go into 1989 because I need to introduce this kit to you guys as well. Um, this kit is actually PK-49 and it was a retool of PK-11 to introduce the Mark IId. Which is the 40mm cannon armed anti-tank versions of the Hurricane that served quite actively in the, in the Western Desert campaign in North Africa. Um, the PK number was changed to PK-49 and they stopped selling PK-11. Um, again, this was heavily influenced by the Revell marketing. Um, and it was a good step because the Mark IId Hurricane was actually a very accurate kit of the Hurricane, even though it had virtually no interior detail. It was a very accurate kit and we'll have a look at the parts in a minute. But that was 1989 when this kit was first introduced as the Hurricane Mark IId and IIc. Then you go into 1992, and this was the last rendition of this particular kit released from um, Revell, but it was still a Matchbox product. And you can always tell the type, um, I think it's a Type 6 or 7 box, I can't remember exactly, I think it's a Type 7 box. You can always tell the Type 7 boxings because of this logo here. This is a German stamp introduced by Revell. Um, I think it's called Der Gruber Punkt. I think that's what it says. Um, <clears throat> and this was a this sign has featured on quite a lot of the boxings after the 1990s that were still Matchbox releases, but they were virtually under the grasp of Ravel. And very quickly after this date in 1993, I think it was, or 1994, Ravel actually took over Matchbox, Lock, Stock and Barrel and, uh, barrel and purchased all of their sprues and actually released them as Revell models. Um, but they did something beforehand to the Matchbox models after this era, but it didn't affect the Hurricane because Revell had actually their own Hurricane kit on the market and they didn't want to sell this particular model in a Revell box or um, late introduction versions of the Matchbox kits, which only had single colours. But as you can see here, this is still a two-colour kit. I can't remember what colour the sprues are in this particular model, um, but they did generally try and sell the kit in sprue colours, which matched the overall theme of the kit itself. So it wouldn't surprise me if this model was two different colour browns. Um, it's in desert colours, um, so it would suggest that. The other thing I wanted to show you is this image. <clears throat> this is an image of, I don't think they're real aircraft. Well, they don't get me wrong, they could be. But it's something that shouts out to me that it looks like a a pixel image from a computer computer game like War Thunder or something like that. But the image is so crisp that it could very well be a real photo of Hurricane Mark II Cs in operational duties in the Western Desert. Um, and this is the other variant of the Hurricane 2C that you can build from the kit that I'm actually doing. I thought it was quite nice to show this image, to show you the two different options that you've got available with this particular kit. So what I want to do now is quickly just pan the camera down. <clears throat> and I'll try and do this as easily as possible without making too much noise, because I know you guys don't want to understand. 
and there we go. This is this is the kit in question. What I want to do quickly now, if I can do this, is try and reposition the source of the camera so I can get the shadow out of the way. It's probably going to be a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, that should be a bit better. Right. <clears throat> So here we have the box itself. Actually, let's try and see if I can get a little bit more definition in this. Bring it out a little bit. There we go. This is the box itself. Um, this is the first rendition that Ravel um, had a go at marketing the aircraft. It's in a new type of artwork. New decals. The decals in this kit are different to the original release. Um, but no, sorry, they are the same. They just chose the different option to build this particular kit. And show the the second option on the on the um, on the on the box lid. The, I know it looks like it's green and brown, but in actual fact, it is two it's light tan and dark earth. It's the camo pattern, and you've got um, I think it's Humbrol ninety, which is duck egg green for the underside, and the spinner color there, and also for this band at the back here. That's also the same colour. On the side of the box, you've got a nice image there of the kit made up. You can see the two sprue colours. They're green and brown, um, which is quite nice. You've got some two-colour kits in various different languages and the Matchbox logo, Hurricane Mark 2C, written on there. On the side, um, PK11, clearly view. And on this side, you've got some information, um, just information telling you the company who produces this kit um, which is quite interesting and it's a one skill level and when you see the kit inside you'll see why it's a one skill level now then <clears throat> I'm not going to show you the back because the back is actually the color guide and forms part of the instructions so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the kit out the box <clears throat> and we'll have a look at the instructions first of all actually let's take this out of the equation and have a look at the instructions first of all and we'll have a look at those in a minute With the later rendition matchbox kits, they did away with colour coding the instruction leaflets and generally printed them all in black and white. Um, and this being a 1982 release, or it could be an 89 release, I can't remember exactly, but it's, it's when they changed the artwork. Can you see the interesting giveaway is that the original artwork from the early release boxes is still a feature of the instruction leaflet on the top, which I always thought was quite funny. Um, you've got some information, description, history and stats on the top there, top right hand corner. And there's more gumph and the stats for the aircraft itself above the assembly, the word assembly, which is quite nice. On the back, <clears throat> you've got some guides there to colours to paint the various parts as you proceed through the build of the model, which is quite nice. Um, there's something there's, there's a couple of things I quite like about this kit and I'll show you all about that the instruction leaflet itself is it folds up into about a5 which is quite nice but it opens up in three different pages of a5 on the back you've got a color guide it's like a color call out um, which is quite nice HB1 and you've got different different languages across there. I can't remember what type of colorways these are in relation to which company of paints, um, but they also have the airfix numbers there where appropriate, M12, um, yeah, M7, 31 is a humbral color for slate gray. So they're, you know, they're, they're a sort of a mixed bag of the different paint the paint numbers available on this kit and we'll just open it up very quickly and show you um, it won't take long to go through the instructions because the instructions are pretty crude and fun fundamental but basically in section one you're putting the pilot and seat together and that does constitute the interior detail section two you're putting the propeller and spinner assembly together um, section three you're marrying up the two fuselage halves around sections four well it's section one sub assembly and then in section four, you're putting basically be putting the propeller and the canopy into place with the tail wheel at the back there. I don't generally fit the canopies until after I've painted the airframe, but you guys who follow my videos, you'll know that. Then you put the wings and tail and pennage together. 
interesting feature of this kit is that the wings are made up of four parts instead of three. So yeah, that, that could cause problems, but it hasn't for me in the past with Matchbox models. The FW190 that I built went together in exactly the same way and I had no issues with that. Section 7, you're basically putting the undercarriage together. And then in section eight, you're fitting the final fittings under oil, uh, the wa water radiator undercarriage goes in place and the Hispano cannons, they go into the front of the wings. And here's one of the features that I quite like, um, the fact that the exhaust stubs, can you see them there, the exhaust stubs, part 29, they go in as an afterthought after you've painted the model. And I always like that idea as well. The other thing I quite like, if you go back to section four, where you put the propeller on, the propeller is actually a, a fully standalone assembly. And basically what you do is part five there, you can see there, that's actually the, the that forms the forward part of the fuselage. And you glue that to the front of the fuselage. So the propeller still rotates. But that also means that you can do that after you've painted the airframe. And it makes it a lot easier to paint the spinner and the airframe itself as a separate entity and then marry the two up together afterwards. There's also an option there in separate parts. You'll see those in a minute to have the undercarriage in the up or lowered position, which is quite nice. So that's the instructions. It's quite simple. There's not an awful lot there to worry about. On the back of the box, you've got the paint guide. <clears throat> now I've been told by a couple of subbers that when I did matchbox model guides before, um, I've forgotten to put the paint guide. I think the Wellington was one of them. Um, so here we are, the paint guide. You can see the uh, Night Ops variant from number, i try and remember what number that is, number 87 Squadron. Um, I've got the actual air bases where these aircraft were based um, in the, the gump that I'll read out later. But that's the Night Ops variant. And underneath is the variant which was used um, for rhubarb runs um, and nuisance flights basically which were quite interesting I always found that quite interesting um, but usually these aircraft were operated from North Africa but I think this one is actually based in England as you'll see in a minute when I sh when I show you the um, both these variants are actually based in England I'll show you when, when we get to the gump there the actual color of the top aircraft is actually green and gray with a matte black underside and the lower option is light tan, dark earth and duck egg green for an underside. You can paint the spinners any colour you like. The spinners on the picture I've got in front of me of the North African campaign, they're actually the propellers and the spinners are all matte black. Um, but I have seen red spinners for the North African campaign. I've seen blue, I've seen yellow and white. Um, and also, of course, duck egg green. And it's the same with the top ones. You can use red, you can use blue, yellow. I've also seen some matte black. I've also seen one of a photograph in a museum somewhere. I think it was the BBMF aircraft, actually, when they did this air, their Hurricane Mark II C up in this livery, where it actually had a gloss spinner, gloss black spinner and propeller, um, all painted the same colour, which was quite nice. So that's the paint guide on the back. Quite easy the decals. Matchbox decals, I want to say something about Matchbox decals because Matchbox decals don't get the ride that I think they should. Now this particular sheet is a little bit worse for wear. I know that the image you're seeing in front of you isn't that bad but this particular sheet is a little bit under the weather and I think it's because of the age of them. They haven't aged as good as most Matchbox decal sheets do and even though these decals are in the best part, 30 years old, 28 years old, maybe. I'm not expecting to have issues with them going on and lying on and staying on. But the there is an issue with this particular sheet. If you look at the top right hand low vis roundel, it's got a nip out of it. Like when it was printed, it just it didn't didn't get printed correctly. And there's like a nip out of the very end there in the corner, which um, yeah. But you might be able to weather that in, I don't know, you might be able to do something. But basically, if you've got an old Matchbox kit and the decals, you know, you're worried about the decals going on, don't worry about them. They will apply very well. They never, ever have an issue with them. And even the backing film on the back is usually 
crystal clear even after 30 years so i'm not having expecting to have an issue without the register on them actually the register on the other decals is pretty good um, the lka variant i'm sort of tempted to go for that but i'll i'll probably build the north african campaign variant uh, which funnily enough in this kit is, is supposed to be based in England <laughs> which was quite interesting but that's the uh, that's the decal sheet so let's just put this over the top of there and what I want to show you now is the there are two parts there are two parts on a plastic sprue on here there we go you've got the canopy itself and there's a little wing navigation light on this sprue and it's having a prop there we go it's it's come into focus properly now now the actual clarity and the quality of this canopy is pretty good um, I'm quite impressed with that and I don't think that's going to give me any issues at all it should paint up really nice it's crystal clear you can see right through it you can actually see I don't think you can see my fingerprints clearly but you can see that there are some sort of prints going on there see it through both edges it's actually a really nice canopy and then you've got the two sprues which are two separate colors you've got I'll, sh I'll show you this one first the the green sprue with the wings on it and I just want to show you um, <clears throat> you've got the matchbox ID there which is made in England PK 11 can you see that and that will be a feature of every matchbox kit that's matchboxed in a matchbox boxing the parts themselves then I'm going to be honest with you they are they're very accurate I mean looking at the outline of that wing and it's pretty good and the 2C Spano cannon armament required those bulges um, and that is absolutely correct the accuracy of the parts the contours and the actual finish on those fabric covered ailerons is pretty good the rest of the wing looks okay the only image uh, issue I have with them is those trend lines are pretty deep aren't they um, but and here's a big shocker they're recessed those lines on the wings are recessed um, and they're recessed on the tailplane as well um, the other parts seem to be quite nicely molded and cast which is great two different uh, undercarriage doors there for undercarriage up or down and you've got couple of fine parts there as well they seem to be okay too which is quite good so the actual quality of the parts is quite good the only issue I have is really the tram lines and we'll talk about those when I get to the conclusions um, the second sprue is light brown as you can see here it's quite a nice light brown color propeller there apparently this propeller is really accurate and is of the thicker paddle type which required the much bigger spinner on the Hurricane Mark II C, and it's really accurate. The, the reviewers they love this kit for its accuracy. Um, the small parts there at the top. There's the the familiar Matchbox pilot and his seat. There's the radiator there that goes under the middle of the section of the wing. Um, you've got the cannons. They're quite nicely molded as well. They should. You guys who like putting oils and washes on they should take on a wash quite nicely and you've got the exhaust stacks there which exhaust stacks are stubs stub exhaust there which are quite nice um fuselage the fuselage on this kit is actually a really nice piece of casting but those tram lines are massive i mean if that was a real aircraft true scale i think those tram lines would be about an inch wide and probably about an inch deep which would be really serious you know the panels flapping in the wing at 300 in 300 odd mile an hour um, but as you can see the image of that fuselage half is really nice the wheels they're quite nicely detailed as well they look pretty good don't they and the spinner itself it's the big boss spinner type that's really nice come up really good and um, I don't need to show you the other the other fuselage half because it's just a carbon copy of the original so that's the parts the parts look pretty good i'm quite impressed with the parts um what i'll quickly do now i just want to put this kit back into the box um, and then we'll go through the gump and close this video down now i normally do a section in my inbox reviews which cover the um options and costs 
But because, like most frontline fighters of World War II, like the Spitfire and the Messerschmitt 109 and the Mustang, there are a large number of options, even for the Hurricane. So I've restricted them to the small scales, down to 172nd scale. And I've also restricted the worthy of note and kits to avoid down to those scales as well. It's a nice image there, I'll just show you that image. So you've got something to look at whilst we're going through this gun. Um, the model itself that we're reviewing today is the Matchbox Hawker Hurricane Mark IIc. The kit's moulded in 172nd scale and it has a serial number of PK11 and the original release date was 1972. There are decals for two options. The first is a number 87 squadron REF Fighter Command based at REF Warmwell in 1941 on Night Ops. And the second is a number 3 squadron fighter aircraft from REF Fighter Command based at Stapleford in uh, sorry Stapleford Tawney in 1941. Now I do I have done some research and looked some of this up and I'm pretty sure that number three squadron uh, was an assessment and training squadron prior to aircraft pilots going out to the front line. But they were used uh, extensively for rhubarb ops nuisance flights um, over northern Europe, especially France and Belgium um, to disrupt enemy lines, communications and of course attack their bases. The dimensions of the kit are roughly five and a quarter inches long. It has a span of six and three quarter inches and it should sit about an inch and a half high on its undercarriage. Now there are 12 parts on one green plastic sprue, 22 parts on one light brown plastic sprue and two parts on a clear plastic sprue totaling 36 parts in total. Now the options and costs, I've shown you a few of them already, um, but in 1700 scale, Nico do a cam ship, which is a resin cast model, which includes a Hurricane cam catapult fighter. Um, and that kit usually retails for about £33. It's not a cheap option, but it does look very nice. Aoshima's carrier Born aircraft number two set in 1700 scale, I've got no pricings on that, but they're probably going to be about 15 quid. Flyhawk models also do a Royal Naval Aircraft set number one, and that's available from about 10 to 14 pound. And the Tom's Model Works Hurricane Mark I printed resin kits, I've got no details on the pricings on those, but I have seen some of the other models that they produce, um, and they're usually about 12 to 14 quid, but I'm not sure about this particular kit because the other model sets usually only have two or four models in their sets, but this one I think has five or six, uh, so it could be a little bit more, maybe 20 or 24 pound. In one 150th scale, uh, Eco produce a Hurricane Mark IV RP, no pricing is available on that, and Sanko also produce a Hawker Hurricane, um, which is, I can't, uh, there's no pricing available on that either, sorry about that. In one 144th scale, um, AHM produce a Hurricane Mark IIc, no pricing is available on that. RI produce a Hurricane Mark IIc, no pricing is available on that. Academy also produce a Mark IIc for about £5. Crown produce a Mark IIc for £4 to £5. F Toys produce a Mark IIc, no pricing is available on that. Eco do a Mark IIc, no pricing is available on that. And the following companies... Um, all produce Mark I Hurricanes. Ravel's is about two to nine pound. Sweet, who do two kit aircraft boxings, that retails for about thirty-two to thirty-seven pound. But there are a large number of different boxings available. Um, one of them is a sort of a caricature type style kit, um, and it's not very accurate, but it's supposed to be a cartoony sort of kit. ZTS Plastic, their Mark I. Uh, no pricing is available on that, but I have seen one go about a year ago, and that went for about five to six pound. And Svesda also do a Mark One, and I've seen that go for as cheap as two, but it can go up to about twelve pound. One one hundred thirty seventh scale, the Kellogg's offering of the Hurricane Mark Four, no pricing is available on that, but it does vary um, depending on how many are on on the market at any one time. Um, I have seen one of these go for about ten quid. In 1104th scale, Sanwa do a Mark IIc, no pricing is available on that. And the 96th scale Hurricane Mark IId from Vulcan 
there's no pricings available on that. Now there are a large number of options in 172nd scale, and this is the last scale I'm going to cover. Um, AZ model do a Hurricane Mark 1, a 2D, a Mark 4 RP, and a Mark 5. Their kits all retail for between £5.50 and £18. The Academy kit of the Mark 2C retails for £5 to £12. Advent do a Hawker Hurricane, no variant option, uh, and no pricings available on that. The Mark 1 original release 1970s issue from Airfix retails for about £3 to £5. Airfix also did, uh, they do uh, at present a new tool Mark 1, which is probably one of the best Hurricane kits I've seen on the market in this scale, and that can be acquired for as little as 7 but usually retails in the shops for about 12 or 13 quid. Airfix also produced a Series 2 Mark 1, 2B and 2D variant, and that kit can often be bought for as little as 2 but often goes for about 8 to £10. Pound. And they also did an original release in the 50s of the Hurricane Mark 4 RP. This is a Series 1 kit, and that kit can go for as little as 5 quid, but usually goes for between 40 and £45. Pound. Airfix also produced a dogfight double set of the JU-88 and the Hurricane Mark 2B. This kit retails for anything between 10 and £25, pound, um, and isn't that difficult to get hold of. It's very affluently available on eBay all of the time. Aoshima produce a Mark 2D for £2.50 to £8. Uh, Armour Hobby do quite a nice option uh, of the Hurricane Mark 1, the 2C, the 2C Tropical and the Sea Hurricane which is available for £12 to £19. It's not a cheap option but it is very nice. Cyber Hobby and Dragon do a Hurricane and a Hurricane Mark 2C respectively. No pricing is available on these two and I strongly suspect that the Cyber Hobby kit is actually the Dragon kit. Frog originally released the Hurricane Mark 2C in the late 50s for about 3 to £15. Farmtex also produced a Hurricane Mark 2C and that, there's no pricing available on that. Hasegawa produced a Hurricane Mark 2, 2A, 2B, 2C and a C Hurricane in different boxings. Availability is about 6 to £10. Heller produced a reasonable Mark 1 and Mark 2C for about 5 to £15, but I personally don't like the 2C variant of this kit because I think there's issues with the canopy, it looks a bit too big. Legato Plastic Kits produce a Hurricane Mark 2C for about 5 to £8. Lotnia produce a Hurricane Mark 2C, no pricing is available on that. The Matchbox Mark 2C PK11 kit is 10 to £28, and they also released the PK49 variant of the Hurricane 2C and 2D for about 10 to £20. Omega models produce quite a lot of boxings, but they're all reg resin kits of the Hawker Hurricanes Mark 1, 2B, 2D, Mark 4, 4 RP, and the Mark 5, and they also did the biplane variant called the FH30. No pricing is available on that, but I'm betting they're not cheap. Ravel did an early tool Hurricane Mark 1, £2.50 to £13. Beware of this kit, it's pretty dire. They also did a Battle of Britain. Uh, set which included the early tool Hurricane Mark 1, 15 to 35 pound. Ravel also produced a Battle of Britain Memorial Flight set for 20 to 30 pound. And again, I think this kit has no, sorry, this kit has the Mark II C uh, retool in the in the kit, and it's it's quite reasonable. And Ravel also reduced them, uh, introduced the Mark 2B, 2C, and C Hurricane Mark 2C for three to ten pound and that kit is really nice. Sword also produced a very nice Hurricane Mark 1 for about 17 to 20 pound. Now there were a few reboxings, some of them quite odd. Um, Airfix did a retool Hurricane Mark 2C from the Heller kit, that's a Heller rebox for four to nine pound. They also did a Battle of Britain Memorial Flight Hurricane Mark 2C Spitfire 2A and Lancaster B13, which are combinations of Airfix and Heller Hella kits. The Hella kit is the Hurricane for nine to thirty-five pound. Airfix Corporation of America also produced the Hurricane Mark IV RP, which is a reboxed Airfix kit. No pricing is available on that. Airfix by Craftmaster also produced the Hurricane Mark IV RP, which is a reboxed Hurricane and Mark IV from Airfix. No pricing is available on that. Airfix of Tomy also produced the Mark IV RP, which is a reboxed Airfix kit. No pricing is on that. Donetsk Toy Institute did a Hurricane Mark 2C, which is a reboxed frog kit for 5 to £12. Pound. 
and Frog Roly Toys did a reboxed frog kit um, of the Hurricane Mark 2C, no pricings available on that. Fly did a Hurricane Mark 2A and 2B, which is a Hasagawa kit, 15 to 20 pound. Hobby 2000 produced the Mark 2, um, sorry, the Mark 1A, which is a reboxed Hasagawa kit, no pricings on that. And Humbrol also produced, um, no, sorry, Hobby Boss also produced a reboxed Revell kit of the Mark 2C for four to eight pound. Hobby Boss produced a rebox, sorry, Humbrol produced a reboxed Heller kit of the Hurricane Mark 2C for no pricings available on that. MPC reboxed the uh, Series 2 Hurricane Mark 1 as a Mark 1, but it's the reboxed Hurricane Mark 1 2B and 2D kit, no pricings available on that. There was a, an offering from Marks and Spencers who actually reboxed the Mark 2C from Revell, and that kit is now still available for about £3.50 to £12. Quid. Mr. Craft also reboxed the Hurricane Mark 2C from Heller, that's available for about tenner. Model List reboxed the Academy kit of the Mark 2C, no pricings on that. Novo reboxed the Mark 2C from Frog, which goes for anything but from five to twelve pound. Plasti also produced the Mark 4 RP, which is the X Airfix kit, no pricings available on that. Remus Play Kits reboxed the Frog Mark 2C, that can go for seven to twelve pound. And SMER also reboxed the Hurricane Mark 2C. And I think there's, uh, they also built a Mark IV in a different boxing uh, for eight to eleven pound. Conclusions: <clears throat> the Matchbox Hurricane Mark II is a very basic um, kit that was originally aimed at children, so it won't have any fit issues. That being said, the reviewers have mixed feelings about this kit. Some praise it highly and some say it's a waste of time but there are usually two reasons and it's because the pro reviewers split into two different sections some pro reviewers like uh, giving opinions on what would make a good kit for a professional build and some pro reviewers review the kit as it was aimed in the market when it was released now this kit has no interior detail or wheel well detail at all, but it does have a very accurate outline and it will resemble a Hurricane more than most kits releases of its era. The deep recessed panel lines are going to be a problem, but they should fill up easy enough with one to two coats of primer in the trenches before the camo pattern is applied. Also, don't be put off by the age of the decals as I have never had issues with Matchbox decals. They apply and retain their backing film clarity with surprising results. Models to avoid are the Heller and Academy-based Mark II Cs and Revell's early Mark I and the Frog-based kits, which are truly diabolical. But models worthy of note are the newer tool Revell Hurricane Mark II C and C Hurricane kits and the new tool Airfix kit of the Mark I. This kit is a real gem. So that's the... Um, Final uh, the inbox review finished. I hope this video has been of some use. Um, if you have any queries, questions, anything really at all, just pop them in the comments boxes underneath and I'll try and get back to you with any answers as quickly as possible. Um, thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope all your modeling projects are running very smooth. And I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye for now.